Welcome back to the Beetlejuice dollhouse, everybody. As you may be able to tell from my voiceover, my voice is not in the best condition, so I'm trying to drink lots of hot tea and fluids to get better for the next video. You will not have to listen to me for this whole video. I do have a guest voiceover artist who is going to be helping me out. I hope you'll be very kind and uh, sweet to my daughter, who has given up a lot of her time this week to help me with this. The last time I did anything on this dollhouse was in December, and it's been buried since then, so I'm going to remove all of the mail that's come in. If you sent in something for this project, I will be showing it in the next video when my voice is doing a little bit better. But for now, I'm going to be showing you one item I'm going to be making for the kitchen. I'm making Delia's fridge from this scene. Don't you dare speak to others about me! The only thing that scares me is being embarrassed in front of the few hip people I can get to set foot in this part of Connecticut. Fun fact about this scene is that Delia is actually wearing one of Charles' sweaters as pants. Now that I have everything cleared off, I can turn the project around to give you a better look at the room that's going to be the kitchen. It's one of the largest rooms on the lower floor. This is the dining room we did previously. This is the living room I've done a little bit in, but the kitchen is long and thin, but I'm glad it's got quite a bit of room because the fridge is going to be rather large. Speaking of the fridge, I am now going to turn the voice over to Bentley House Kid, who's gonna tell you how I made it. To begin, I drew out the floor plan of the Beetlejuice House Kitchen. I made sure to include all of the doorways and the magnetic panel that is removable on one side. Two of the major pieces in this room are the large kitchen island and the very modern refrigerator that you see Delia open in the movie. There is also a strange red countertop in the background behind Lydia. It is very similar to the counter in the living room scene, but I will just be making up how it looks within the kitchen floor plan. The most important information I got from this process was the footprint size of the fridge, which is going to be 4 inches by 2.5 inches. I am using this to start drafting the design of Delia's industrial fridge. For those who are wondering, I won't be sharing this pattern or putting it in my store as a kit yet, as I haven't had time to perfect it. This video is just showing the process of how it went together. I do have another pattern I will share with you at the end, so stay tuned. Judging by the height of the fridge next to Delia in the film, I decided to make it six and a half inches tall. The rest of the pattern will fit within these dimensions. Here is how the drawing is looking so far. The only thing I really changed are the handles. They are long and thin in the movie, however, I made them inset in the door. They kind of look like the letter D for Delia. I have decided to 3D print the sliding track for the working glass doors and the shelf supports. This is going to help me keep this project really sleek and modern like it's supposed to be. This idea prompted me to build the entire fridge in Tinkercad, a 3D design program. This enabled me to make sure all the pieces fit together before cutting or printing anything out. After it was designed, I was able to take the 3D object apart, lay it flat on the work surface, and export it as an SVG. This is like an automatic pattern for my laser that I already know fits together, in theory. Basically, it was built together in the computer and then taken apart into pieces. Then, the pieces were printed and cut and could be reassembled in real life. Here is what the fridge looks like exploded into all its components. The red shapes are vertical pieces and the tan shapes are horizontal ones. These are all going to be laser cut. On a separate file, I saved the teal pieces, which are going to be 3D printed. That's it for the computer design. Let's get to putting this fridge together. It took six sheets of mat board to cut out all of the pieces. I am going to begin by gluing together any shapes that need to be doubled up. I will speed through this process a little bit so we can get to the fun part. These small rectangular cutouts are where the 3D printed supports are going to be glued later on. I was really excited to see that most of the pieces match closely with my original hand drawn design. Hopefully this means construction will go smoothly. 
After all the doubled up pieces were dry, I could start putting the main body of the refrigerator together. The back and two side walls went together easily, but I started to notice some problems in my design when I added the bottom panel. If I do make this into a kit in the future, I will have to adjust it. It was a bit too skinny for the fridge interior and left gaps at the edges. Because the gaps weren't too large, I decided to continue with the pieces I already cut, but I kept checking that the front panel still fit. It is going to be one of the most important pieces in this build. It was very satisfying to see that the 3D printed shelf supports fit perfectly into the laser cut gaps in the wall. After they were all glued in place, this is how they were looking. Three supports for each shelf. At this point, I could also include the lower track for the sliding glass doors. I wasn't sure what the best order to put all of this together was, so I was figuring it out as I went. Painting in stages was going to be key to this project. I knew I was going to have to paint the interior before closing off all access with more exterior pieces. I braced the exterior of the fridge while the paint dried so it hopefully wouldn't warp too much. <laughs> Yeah, warping can really be a problem. I don't know why she thinks that's so funny. <laughs> While the interior was drying, I could get to work on all the glass surfaces, which were going to be made of recycled plastic in my project. The sliding doors, the shelves, and the light at the top of the fridge all need these plastic pieces. I'm using the map board components to trace the shapes on the plastic for an easy pattern to cut. Making sure that the shelves are transparent will help the light move from the top of the fridge down to the bottom, lighting up all the food inside. I glued the plastic pieces into the doors and on the shelf frames and allowed them to dry. I can now insert the ceiling of the fridge, which had the same issue as the lower panel. It was a little too skinny for the width of the fridge. This is a bigger problem for the top because I plan to insert a light and don't want any light to shine through the cracks. To fix this, I'm just going to glue some pieces of black matte board along the edges to ensure that no light leaks from the top. I pre-painted the front panel of the fridge because it would be hard to do after it was glued in place. I am hoping this won't make it harder to get the shelves in place later down the line. I used one, two, three blocks to make sure it all dried flat. One of my goals of this project was make a very refined, sleek finish to this fridge. Because my pattern didn't line up perfectly, I was left with some edges that I wanted to try and sand flat. Unfortunately, I'm either bad at sanding or have no patience for sanding, because that did not work for me. Instead, I decided to build up the side of the fridge with layers of cardstock to meet the edge of the front panel. This was much quicker and still looked good in my opinion. Here you can see the built up side of the fridge where the cardstock was added. I ended up doing this for both sides of the fridge. There needs to be a bright light at the top shining down. I want the plastic covering the light to look frosted, so I'm sanding the piece that I cut before I install it. This will make the plastic opaque so the light bulb in the wires cannot be seen through the plastic. Now this piece can be glued in place. The very top of the fridge is going to act as a reflector to send more of the light downward. To do this, I'm adding some sticky mirror paper to the underside before gluing it down. There are very distinct design pieces attached to the exterior of Delia's fridge, which can be seen here. I'm adding those pieces to my miniature fridge with matte board strips that go across the front and around the sides. There's one of these decorative strips that goes across the top and one that goes towards the base. And no fridge is complete without a vent near the floor so you can dry your shoes when they come out of the washing machine. What? This isn't shown in the movie, but it makes sense and is a fun detail to add. I laser cut these pieces similar to the pattern I use for my shutters. I can grab the cut pieces with tweezers and rotate them carefully so that the vents are angled down. After I have the vent piece glued onto the fridge, I can add a few dabs of glue to the back 
to secure the paper vents in place. This will make them stronger and less likely to break. Isn't she doing like the most amazing job ever? <laughs> I'm so proud of her. Make sure to leave a like for my daughter who put a lot of hard work into this video for me and for you. It's time for painting once again. I'm starting with a light layer of paint over these cardstock sheets that I added so they won't warp or wrinkle. It was at this point I decided to use triple thick spray to make the fridge extra shiny. I was also hoping this would cover up some of the cracks and imperfections but would prove to cause more problems than I had bargained for. Before spraying, I made sure to add a cover to the sliding door track so it didn't cause any problems with the doors in the future. After spraying the glassy finish, I noticed several problems where the drips had occurred. I was hoping sanding would remedy this, but it ended up taking a chunk out of the mat board. I removed the rest of the issues with a sharp blade and hoped that I could fix it in the future. This should have been my sign to stop while I was ahead. Instead, I decided to double down and try airbrushing the finish. There were noticeable brush strokes in the silver paint and I was hoping using an airbrush would fix that. I had never used a metallic paint and airbrush before and I found that this particular brand clogged quite a bit. If I had not put down a base layer with the paint brush, I think the finish would have looked awful. This is what I get for trying a new technique and material on a finished miniature. For some reason, I had the bright idea to do more of the triple thick spray and it reacted with the airbrush paint to make a rippled surface. At this point, I really did need to cut my losses and move forward. So a rippled metallic finish it is, I guess. Now that all the painting is done, I can add the shelves to the interior. They fit pretty well. However, I did have to cut the edges of the middle shelf slightly so it would angle into place properly. I am using museum wax to keep the shelves and all the items I plan to put inside the fridge in place. This way I can move things around in the future if I had more items to add. The food I will be using today was made by polymer clay artist Andrea Victoria Paradiso. She sent these colorful creations to me back when I was working in the dining room and now I can finally place them into a scene. Can you believe the color and detail of these vegetables? They'll be the star of the show when I get to making the center island. This cake just screams Beetlejuice and has Andrea's signature built into the design. Have you ever seen a fresher tray of lemons? Andrea made the shrimp cocktail bowls before she knew I planned to make my own. However, once I saw them, I knew they would be a perfect addition to Delia's kitchen. Now I can start adding all this gorgeous food onto the fridge shelves. I'm trying to remember that I want light to move all the way from the top down to the lower shelves. I wanted some other items added alongside the food, but I didn't want them to seal the spotlight. Then I realized what Delia's fridge would have a lot of. To-go boxes. These would fill up some space while remaining unobtrusive. I traced some real life to-go box patterns in Inkscape and cut them out with my laser. I cut some out from white cardstock and brown scrapbook paper. These are not an original design of mine, so I can't sell them in my store. However, I can give you the pattern and SVG for free in the description box below this video. They are pretty self-explanatory on how to fold them so there are no instructions, just the patterns. After assembling several of them with tweezers and glue, I was able to add them into the fridge. This does a great job of filling the shelves, but keeping things from looking too busy. I also found this little half-filled orange juice pitcher in my collection. I might add more things in the future. Adding the doors was nerve-wracking. They had to be bent into place along the track. Thankfully, the mat board and the plastic pieces are pliable and didn't give me too much of a fight. However, I don't want to have to bend them too often, so I save this part to the very end. 
Once they are both installed, I was glad to find that they slid easily along the track and really resembled the sliding glass doors from the movie. Due to the unique nature of this video, I ran out of time to find and test out lighting in the top of the fridge. When I am able to work on the kitchen more in the future, I will do it at that time. Let's see how this appliance looks in the kitchen space. I am so thankful to have this huge kitchen statement piece finally completed. And this voiceover. Bentley House Kids signing off! That's all I have for you today. Thank you for allowing me to be a little creative with this video so that I could get it out to you. And hopefully my voice will be back to normal for the next one. I can't wait to work on that center island and show you some of the other miniature houses that have been sent in for the Beetlejuice project. I hope you all have an amazing week. <laughs> I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. So I'm sanding the piece that I cut before it, I sandal it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I get for trying a new technique and material on a new finish material. What? After all the tough <laughs> Cutting that for the musical. However, I can give you the pattern in SUV for free. <laughs> So I forgot, what am I paying you for your voiceover work today? A million dollars. What about like ice cream? Um, well I mean, if you add ice cream on top of the million dollars, then Million dollars and ice cream. Yes. That's fair? Yes. <laughs> Are you gonna help me again in the future? Only if you give me my million dollars in ice cream. <laughs> okay. <laughs>